As much as I like putting a nice finish on a wood project, that first whiff of fumes from the can kind of spoils the experience for me. I suppose it's because I don't like getting bombarded with a witch's brew of chemicals, chemicals that may or may not be safe for me to breathe. The problem is that it's nearly impossible to finish a piece of wood without releasing some amount of toxins in the air. Whether we like it or not, the chemical properties of a finish, like the solvents and the binders and the pigments, are what make a finish what it is. The trick, then, is to choose a finish with the least amount of hazardous chemicals in the mix, but still effective in creating a durable, long-lasting surface. So what exactly makes one finish more hazardous than another? Actually, it's a combination of many different things, but the top three factors that really tell the story about how safe a particular finish might be are the VOC rating, the solvents used in the finish, and how the finish is applied. Each of these play an important part in determining the overall toxicity of paints, stains, and clear top coats, so it's important to consider all three before drawing any conclusions about how safe a particular finish really is. First, let's take a look at VOC ratings. VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. Now, federal law requires that manufacturers include a VOC rating on the label. The rating is important because VOCs can pose certain hazards to the environment and to the person using the product. The rating is displayed in grams per liter and tells us the relative concentration of VOCs that are present in the mix. Now when we say volatile, we're talking about vapor, so a VOC rating is all about measuring the gases that escape from a finish before it has a chance to dry. As a general rule, the lower the VOC rating, the less potential hazard this product might pose. However, there's a little more to the story than that. Is a low VOC rating enough? Maybe not. I think we can all be happy that manufacturers are developing new finishes with lower VOC ratings. That's the good news. The bad news is that we're often led to believe that VOC ratings give a complete picture of the potential hazards lurking in the can. Unfortunately, this isn't always true. Sometimes understanding the true toxicity of a product goes beyond what a simple VOC rating can tell us. The VOC rating is not a complete picture of the toxicity of a finish. That brings us to my second consideration when choosing a finish, and that's taking a close look at the solvents found in the can. Now there are a lot of different types of solvents used in finishes, but the top four worst of the worst solvents that you should avoid in a finish are ethylene glycol, benzene, toline, xylene, and naphtha. These chemicals are bad news. They're linked to cancer, liver and kidney damage, and are even outlawed in some states. With all the new finishes that are out there today, there's really no reason for project builders like us to buy products that contain these chemicals. Now sometimes the best way to avoid hazards in a wood finish is to simply be smarter about how you use the product. For example, buy only what you need. Keeping unused paint and finish in the shop is bad for both you and the environment. Even with our best attempts to keep a tight lid on the container, unused finishes usually end up emitting VOCs into the home indefinitely. If you have leftovers, check with your local waste management office to find out about special pickup days or drop-off points for getting rid of unused paint and finishes. Work outdoors. The best place to apply a finish is outside in a driveway, the backyard, or a garage with the door open. This will keep the fumes away from the house and prevent toxic chemicals from building up indoors where you and your family spend most of your time. Now I realize this isn't always practical, so if you must work indoors, take a few extra precautions like opening windows, running fans, and wearing a mask. Use finishes that last. The more often you have to refinish a wood project, the more often you expose yourself and the environment to whatever toxic chemicals are in the can. In some cases, this means a finish with a higher VOC rating might actually be a better choice if it provides a longer lasting surface that does not need to be refinished. This is especially true for projects that are put under harsh conditions like floors and tables and outdoor projects. Now, if you plan to do a lot of wood finishing inside your home, you might be interested in a study by the University of Georgia that found certain indoor plants having the ability to remove harmful VOCs from indoor air. The study tested 28 different species, with five plants rated as superior in their ability to remove VOCs. 
purple waffle plant, English ivy, variegated wax plant, the asparagus fern, and the purple heart plant. Now if you'd like to learn more about finishing pine, I have a complete guide available at my website, easywoodshop.com. The 26-page ebook takes you step-by-step step through the entire process, starting with how to prepare the surface properly, and then how to apply some of the more popular types of finishes, like stains, paint, and a clear top coat. And if you visit my website now, I'll give you a free sample download that includes a nice chart for comparing the VOC levels found in popular wood finishes. Thanks for watching. Take care, be safe in the shop, and do good work.